Hey there, Eric Archer here from TI. Have you ever had a chance to visit a river? Uh, maybe, maybe you've walked ankle deep into it and picked up a rock and thrown it. Or if you haven't had a chance to visit a river, you've probably seen one on, on TV or a movie. Where do the rocks come from? You know, this body of water, this moving water, going from one location to the next, where do the rocks come from? And the answer is the water itself moves rocks down the river. And you may have already learned about the concept of erosion, and we're going to explore that more today. But erosion is the movement of rocks or dirt from one location to another. And, and that's how those rocks got there. Uh, you may have also noticed that those rocks are very smooth, uh, rounded. Well, they didn't start off that way. They started off as big jagged pieces. And over time, uh, the, the river, the motion of the water softened uh, the edges and turned them into nice, soft, round edges. Well, today we're going to work on a simulation and we're going to control the, the slope, all right, or the slant of the river bed, all right? So, and, and we're going to look and see what the result is when we uh, take a riverbed from here and then change it to there. And we're going to look at the rate of erosion, how quickly we can move rocks from one part of the river down to the other part of the river. If you'd like to do this activity on your own, please visit our website at www.education.ti.com and download the software. It's called TI Inspire CX Premium Software. And the software, once you have it, you can use it to, to um, uh, open this file, this lesson called Stream Erosion, which can be downloaded for free at www.scienceinspired.com. Otherwise, please watch the video and pause at any time if you're, if you're taking notes or you need to replay something uh, to better understand it. Okay, with that, let's get started. Okay, so I have, uh, have the file stream erosion uh, loaded onto uh, my TI Inspire um, CX Premium software. And uh, I've got it open to the title screen. I'm going to move on to the next page, page 1.2. And I'm going to ask you a couple of questions before we get started on the actual simulation. And the first question is, when the slope of the ground increases, that is when that slant of the ground, when the, when the ground uh, has a little bit of a uh, sort of an incline to it or decline rather, uh, when that slope of the ground increases, the flow rate of a stream, will it A, increase, B, decrease, or C, will it stay the same? So in other words, if you were to take uh, a board and pour a little water on that board uh, in, in a direction, you know, in, in a, from, from left to right, um, what would happen if the board were flat? Well, chances are the water is just going to kind of run all over the board randomly. But if you take that same board and you pick up one end and then you pour a little bit of water at about the same rate uh, that you poured before, what's going to happen? Well, most likely that water is going to move from the side you're pouring it from down to the other end. And the force that's causing that to happen is gravity. And the more you angle that board and repeat this process, you're probably going to notice that just like the stream, when you increase the slope of the ground, the flow rate of a stream is definitely going to increase. So the answer would be A, the flow rate of a stream increases when the slope of the ground also increases. All right, page 1.3, when, when the flow rate of a stream increases, that is the water is moving faster, the size and amount of rock particles, uh, particles it erodes, and remember erosion, eroding means to move rock particles from one part of the river down to another part of, so erosion is really movement of rocks. So when, when the flow rate of that stream increases, the size and amount of the rock particles it moves, is it going to A, increase, B, decrease, C, stay the same? And like I mentioned before, if you had a, a board um, and you threw some, maybe put some dirt, little chunks, little small rocks on there and slowly pour the water uh, and then change the angle of that board, you'll notice that the uh, rate at which the water and the amount of rock particles the water can move as you increase the rate of the water moving because of the slope increase, everything's going to increase, okay? So it's not just the slope that's causing the increase of rocks and, and, and soil to move faster. It's because of the slope increasing 
the water itself is also going to move faster because it's going down. It's, it's moving down and gravity is pushing the water down. So as a result, uh, the movement will, uh, the movement of the rocks is going to increase and then also the amount of rock particles will also increase um, the uh, erosion of. Okay, so uh, let's see, we're on the simulation, page 1.4. Directions tell me to click the river angle, uh, change it by clicking up and down. Uh, just you know, set the angle of the stream bed, and then click the play pause button to begin the simulation. Click the reset button to start over. So let's look and see what we're we're looking at here. So here I have a river bed. That's what's represented sort of with this brown um, layer. These are rocks of various sizes, obviously weights. Um, the little blue dots represent water. Uh, obviously, we're we're next to um, a really beautiful scenic location. <laughs> Uh, so we have a tree here and uh, there's some mountains in the background. And then I'm going to adjust the river angle. I can adjust it down to where it's, there's only a, a small one degree increase, or slope rather. And then when I move it up, increase it, I can move it all the way up to 10 degrees. Okay, so 10 degrees relative to the horizontal here. So I'm going to, uh, we're going to start off at one degree and then we'll change it and kind of monitor what happens. We're going to press start. And so the river flow is uh, from left to right of your screen. And you'll notice those little blue dots that are representing water. Um, they're pushing the rocks uh, along the river bank. I'm sorry, the river bed. But it looks like that's about as far as they made it. All right, they're not going any further. All right, so one degree, uh, we moved from rocks from, from, from about here to about there. And that's about it. Now let's reset the simulation. Let's change this to three degrees and I'll start it. Let's see what happens now. It does look like the rocks are moving a bit faster, which makes sense. And I remember at one degree, this rock, uh, it stopped around right here. Didn't make it any further past that point, but it's still moving now. Looks like movement has slowed quite a bit. This little rock down here may still be moving. Looks like it may have stopped also. That's about it. Okay, so we made it further down this time. The slope increase did cause a, uh, an increase in distance that the rocks traveled. I'm gonna, uh, we'll do it at the default here at five degrees. And let's see what happens now. River's doing a good job of moving the rocks. In fact, this little rock's moving faster than those other two rocks, it looks like. Big rocks are moving a little more slowly. Things are slowing down a bit. Huh? Looks like that was enough to push the rocks on down the river and off this page. All right, now, uh, just because I'm curious, I'm gonna go ahead and bump this thing all the way up to 10 degrees. And uh, we would expect the rocks to move uh, off the screen, but I wanna see if they move, how much more quickly they move when I went from five degrees to 10 degrees. So let's see. Maybe this is a, you know, a Colorado River uh, big time, maybe whitewater river, uh, rafting kind of river that you want to go on and, and have an adventure. And yeah, I sure did a good job there. It really moved those rocks uh, quite a bit down the river. Now, it's not just the angle that can affect the rate of water. Um, it's also just how fast the water is coming in, how much water is coming in. So if you have a, a, a large volume, maybe a storm, a rainstorm, and that water is traveling down a mountain pretty fast, and that that water from the mountain, you know, acts as a watershed and then pushes all these rocks down much more quickly, even though the, the riverbed not, may not be any different. Um, so the riverbed certainly has a, an effect on, on the rate. Uh, other factors may play a role, a role as well, like water volume, how much water are we, we pushing down the river, okay? All right, let's ask some questions here. And uh, these questions are really meant for you to, to think through um, all the scenarios and, and, and gauge your understanding. You'll have to do this on your own since this is a video, but gauge your understanding of, uh, did you understand, you know, 
the differences um, from one angle to the next. Why is there a difference in the rate of erosion uh, from one angle to another? It really all boils down to a single force, and, and that's gravity. Um, but let's check out one, page 125. At what angle was the flow rate of the stream strong enough to erode all of the rock particles? Well, if you remember when we ran this thing at one degree, it didn't push them all down. Uh, and I think at three degrees, it also uh, left a couple of rocks here. At five degrees, it pushed them all down. So it's got to be somewhere between five degrees and three degrees. And we never tried four. So let's give four a shot and see what happens here. We know five degrees. If four doesn't do it, then five degrees is going to be our answer. See, the rocks are slowing down a little bit. I don't think they're going to make it off the screen. Hmm. They're still moving. <laughs> I think that might be it. A couple more seconds here. Yeah, it looks like five degrees is it. That little rock's still moving a little bit. All right, we'll call it five degrees. So uh, the answer to this one will be five degrees. Okay, I'm just going to put a five there. Uh, next page, page 1.6. Which size of rock particle was deposited first when the flow rate of the water was decreased? Okay, so... Uh, in this case, you know, you, you just need to think through sort of the reverse. Um, so when the flow rate of the water is decreased, um, is it going to be a big rock or a medium size or a small rock that's going to get stuck? Wherever it lands, it's going to be stuck there. That's as far as it's going to go because it maybe, you know, it hit a little ridge underneath, underneath the water. Um, it's probably going to be the large rock. It's going to uh, be a big rock that does that. All right. And next question, page 1.7, uh, what happened to the flow rate as the angle, and, and you'll see slope parenthetically here, of the stream bed was decreased. So when you, when you uh, slow things down um, by, by changing the angle, by decreasing the, uh, the angle, what's going to happen to the flow rate of the water? Well, obviously, it's not going to speed up. We saw in the simulation that the lower the angle, the slower the flow rate. And we know that because it didn't push all the rocks uh, down the river. So I'm going to say it's going to be B, the flow rate decreased. So when the angle decreases, the flow rate of water will also decrease. And next question, what happened to the number of rock particles that were eroded as the flow rate increased? Okay, well, we saw that uh, as we increased the angle from 1 degree to 2 degrees to 3 degrees and so on, um, the more we change the angle, the more we increase the angle, we saw that the more rocks were eroded. So that would be A, more eroded, more moved, basically. Remember, erosion means movement. And question nine, in order for the flow rate to increase, what has to happen? Well, the, um, in order for the flow rate to increase, we saw that we have to change the slope of the angle of the stream bed. We've got to uh, change that angle and increase it, make it... Make it uh, um, more severe um, from one side to the next. And the same thing in that sort of analogy I gave you, if you take a, a board and you, you increase the angle of the board, the water's going to go down that board much more quickly than if it were flat or if you just bumped it up just by a little bit. All right. Uh, page 10, in order for larger rocks to be eroded, what has to happen to the flow rate? Well, obviously, if you want big rocks to move down the, the river, um, you're going to have to increase the flow rate of water. And like I said, you could do that by changing the uh, stream bed, the river bed. Well, that would be kind of hard to do. Another way to do it would be to increase the amount of water that's flowing through that river bed. And uh, you'll have more force pushing against that rock. And finally, page 11, um, what force is causing the water to flow? So water moves uh, based on gravity. So you'll never see water going uphill, um, at least not very long. You know, if you're shooting water uphill with like a pressure valve or something like that, that's one thing. But 
in general, water is always going to move in the direction of gravity. And so it's always going to find the lowest um, point in the land um, to, to, uh, to flow down. Okay. So hopefully uh, the simulation was helpful. Um, and like I said, if you have the, if you download the software and download the file, you can mess around with this on your own and, you know, and change the angle and, and watch what happens and, and kind of ask some questions and, and have a better understanding of, uh, of the process in the rate of erosion based on the angle of the stream bed. All right, that's it for this activity. Please check our YouTube channel for more science lessons at uh, TI Calculators, all one word, TI Calculators on YouTube. And uh, also, uh, just a reminder, you can download the software from www.education.ti.com. And this activity is titled Stream Erosion. And you can download that from the Earth Science uh, section of the website. All right, thanks very much and talk to you soon.